What is the commonality between the shows like The Office, Community, Family Eye, The Simpsons, and Deadpool? Not only are these aforementioned shows very entertaining and well loved, but there are examples of meta cinema, a style of filmmaking that has become a staple of our current culture. Indeed, the saying, this is so meta, referring to the self-referential and deconstructive quality of a story can be seemingly applied to almost all of our current obsessed TV shows. So why is it that so many movies and TV shows today retain this postmodernistic style of metafiction? And why are we so obsessed with it? The easiest answer one could give is that metacinema is simply funny. It deconstructs the traditional perception of a movie by constantly breaking all sorts of tension and he levels a playing field with the audience by acknowledging us directly. It is heavily ironic, allowing for genres such as parodies that we enjoy as a culture to thrive. Yet, buried underneath the sound of laughter, there seems to be a deeper and forgotten reason why meta cinema and deconstructive art exist other than for the sake of comedy. But meta theatricality can be traced all the way back to 2500 years ago to ancient Greek theater. Scholars have since argued for the existence of subtle and subversive use of meta digitality in the works of ancient Greek comic playwrights and poets such as Aristophanes and Roman playwright Plautus. Traits of self-referential humor started to become more apparent in the early modern English theater. Take Shakespeare's well-known play Hamlet, for example. In Act 3, Scene 2, Prince Hamlet asked Polonius if he had participated in an amateur dramatic production in college to which Plautus replied, That I did, my lord, and I was accounted a good actor. And what did you enact? I did enact Julius Caesar. I was killed with capital. Brutus killed me. It was a brute part of him to kill you, so capital a cap there. Just in this short dialogue between two characters alone, there exist layers of references and foreshadowing. The first layer of this dialogue acts as a foreshadowing of the murder of Polonius by Hamlet which will happen later in the play, referencing the murder of Julius Caesar by linking Polonius as Caesar and Hamlet as Brutus. The second layer of reference was discovered by historians who deducted that the actors who played Hamlet and Polonius also played the roles of Caesar and Brutus in Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. The audience at the time were well aware of the identities of the actors and their previous roles thus turning the seemingly simple dialogue into a moment of comedy, a joke that has since lost its relevance as time went by. meta theatricality has since grown and evolved, with many playwrights adopting the style of technique in their work. Yet, it would be one playwright who would take this idea and further develop it into something that's completely different and unique with the goal of creating a deeper meaning through art. Born in February 1898, Bertel Brecht was a German theater practitioner, playwright, and a poet who managed to change the common understanding of theater through his revolutionary style of epic theater, or as he liked to call it, didactic theater. Theater in the past and present have predominantly encouraged the audience to emotionally invest in the plot and its characters. In Aristotle's Poetic, he used the term catharsis to describe the purification and purgation of emotions through the medium of art, in particular, tragic plays. Through watching a play, we're invited to wear the shoes of the protagonist, taking a journey of emotions and releasing these emotions through the characters. This is why watching movies and TV shows can be so satisfying. We live through the characters on the screen and experience a fantastical journey, all while in the comfort of our own home. Take the popular James Bond franchise, for example. As the audience, we feel an immense level of satisfaction through watching Bond's heroic journey. Deep down inside, we can't help but imagine what it is like to be James Bond, what it would be like if we could just charm beautiful women, defeat evil with our amazing gadgets while driving the most luxurious and stylish sports cars. Filmmakers take advantage of our innate desire to seek cathartic release and create films and shows that allow us to suspend our disbelief and be immersed by the story. Breck's epic theater aimed to do the total opposite of the Aristotelian idea of catharsis. The goal of epic theater is to engage the audience in a way where we can see the world as it is. Epic theater aims to present ideas and important lessons through the deconstructive nature of the play and invites the audience to make moral judgments on them. The audience members are no longer wearing the shoes of the protagonist, but rather acting as judges of the actions of the characters, reflecting on the idea presented by the playwright and the director. This is all achieved through the use of a technique called the alienation effect. 
popularized by Breck, the alienation effect openly deconstructs the play by making the hidden elements of the theater visible. The alienation effect created a unique situation where the audience was hindered from simply identifying itself with the characters in the play. He further noted that acceptance or rejection of their actions and utterances was meant to take place on the conscious plane instead of in the audience subconscious. Other different specific techniques were used to create the alienation effect in Breck's play. His shows did not make any attempt to hide the stage lights and other stage equipment that are traditionally hidden behind the scenes. He also advocated for a minimal set, costumes, and props, keeping most of these elements to a symbolic level. His characters did not shy away from breaking the fourth wall, and they also used a unique Brecken style of acting technique called gestus, which heavily favors the use of physical gestures and gist to reveal an attitude of a character. Another tool used to create the alienation effect is the use of placards. Placards would be displayed to indicate the location, statistic, and events before each scene, reminding the audience that they are watching a play. Aside from the physical directional choices, Breck also used a technique called historicization to invite the audience to draw connections between a historical event to a current event. Set in the 17th century Europe during the Thirty Years' War, Breck's well-known play Mother Courage and Her Children followed the journey of a traveling trader, Mother Courage, as she pulls her wagon full of goods along for children through the brutal religious war of Europe. Breck used the Thirty Years' War as a comparison to the invasion of Poland by the German armies of Adolf Hitler, which was happening at the time. Breck himself lived in exile during the Nazi period in fear of persecution and channels his anti-fascist and anti-war spirit into writing this play. In this play, hints of Breck's communist influences could also be seen, with him using Mother Courage's obsession with her business and profit as a criticism of our capitalistic culture. Behind every play, every act, and every scene in Breck's work, there is a lesson to be learned. Breck wasn't afraid to challenge and provoke his audience and encourage them to judge the character's actions. The main purpose of Meta Theater for Breck is to invite his audience to use the play to reflect upon the contemporary issues in the world and perhaps learn from the character's fatal flaws and mistakes. In contrast, the use of meta theatricality in today's movies and TV shows mostly just serve as a vehicle for comedy. It simply lacks the substance and important messages that Breck had in his work. Yet it will be Breck who would say that reflection is simply not enough, stating that art is not a mirror held up to reality, but a hammer with which to shape it. Thank you.